Now we're going to construct the solubility table of salts. Uh, to start off constructing this table, the first thing that we need to know is uh, that uh, any salt formed by group one elements, uh, which are actually metals or the ammonium ion NH4 plus one, any salt formed by these uh, ions is going to be very soluble. So group one ammonium salts are soluble and an example would be for example if you have uh, any NaCl N is in group 1 similarly if you have Li um, let's say LiCl that's going to be soluble as well then you have let's say ammonium uh, nitrate that's going to be very soluble as well so these salts are all soluble similarly uh, the second important point is that all nitrates or salts that contain nitrate ions NO3 minus 1 are very soluble so any nitrate for example if you have barium nitrate NO3 and that would be so these are all the examples. Barium nitrate is a soluble salt. Similarly, if you have sodium nitrate, that's a soluble salt as well. If you have lead nitrate, it's going to be PbNO32. That's going to be soluble as well. So all nitrates are soluble. Similarly, you have uh, then uh, thirdly, you are going to have chlorides, bromides, and Chlorides, uh, bromides, and iodides. These are salts which contain Cl minus one, Br minus one, and I minus one. So any salt that contains these three ions, they are soluble apart from a few ex exceptions and those exceptions are soluble except so those exceptions are uh, if the salt contains silver plus one it, it's a silver chloride or a silver bromide or a silver iodide if it contains uh, pb plus two it's a lead chloride bromide or lead iodide or it contains uh, it contains hg plus one mercury so mercury chloride mercury bromide mercury iodide are insoluble and uh, one important thing uh, to remember for this uh, uh, which is an extra point for this is you must remember that uh, what you need to remember is silver chloride and silver um, bromide and silver iodide now these are all insoluble and you need to remember one thing that this is this is white in color so it's a white precipitate because it's insoluble it's going to form a precipitate a precipitate is is a solid which is suspended in a solution so AgCl is going to form a white precipitate AgBr is going to form a cream precipitate which we are going to call PPT and silver iodide is going to form a yellow PPT and one other important thing is that you also need to remember that uh, this white precipitate is soluble in dilute NH3 aqueous so you need to remember this it's going to dissolve in in dilute NH3 aqueous whereas AgBr is going to be it's going it's going to dissolve it's soluble in concentrated NH3 aqueous so This is uh, the cream precipitate is soluble in concentrated NH3 aqueous. So if you if you add NH3 aqueous in concentrated form, this cream precipitate will dissolve. Whereas this yellow precipitate 
is insoluble in NH3 aqueous and it doesn't matter whether the whether the ammonia that we have is is dilute or if it's concentrated so remember this and this is also true for uh, I mean this uh, we've, we've done this for silver chloride silver bromide and silver iodide the results are exactly the same for lead chloride lead PBBr2 and PB I too, the the it's these the same exact results apply to lead bromide, lead chloride, and lead iodide as well. Now uh, let's move on to uh, sulfates. Let's talk about sulfates. Which sulfates are soluble? Uh, when we talk about sulfates, all sulfates, and if you remember correctly, sulfates are as any salt which has SO four minus two in it. So all sulfates are soluble. except you have lead sulfate PbSO4 which is insoluble and you have uh, you have uh, BaSO4 and you have Ag2SO4 silver sulfate now these three are insoluble all the rest are soluble so, uh, let's move on to carbonates and phosphates when you talk about carbonates and phosphates all carbonates which is CO3 minus 2 it's a salt which has CO3 minus 2 in it and all phosphates which is a phosphate which has PO4 minus 3 in it so all carbonates and all phosphates are cons are generally in soluble and there are a few exceptions in this as well so the exception is they're all insoluble except those that are part of those that are, are you, you're talking about carbonates which are group one carbonates except for group one for example if you have sodium carbonate or you have lithium carbonate or you have potassium carbonate and ammonium carbonates and phosphates so except for group 1 in ammonium uh, carbonates and phosphates everything else is is considered insoluble uh, since we're talking about salts we uh, we can generalize this to uh, we can include hydroxide in it as well so although hy hydroxides are alkalis and bases and they don't belong to salts but we need to remember the solubility as well so let's uh, include hydroxides in it as well I'm going to write that in capital because it's not a salt it's a base so hydroxide is any ionic substance which has OH minus one in it so which hydroxides are soluble when we uh, talk about hydroxides uh, group one hydroxides are all soluble So group one hydroxides are all soluble examples are NaOH, you have KOH, and these are generally considered as uh, we we don't call them bases, we call them alkalis because alkalis are soluble bases. So group one, uh, group one bases hydroxides they're all soluble, so they they call alkalis. And group one hydroxides are soluble. Similarly, group two, group two is slightly more tricky. You have if you start group two, you have uh, MgOH2 right at the top then you have uh, calcium hydroxide then you have uh, then you have strontium hydroxide in group 2 and finally you have barium hydroxide barium is in group 2 as well now in group 2 group 1 hydroxides are all soluble but group 2 the solubility increases down the group so it increases down the group barium hydroxide is very soluble these two calcium and strontium are 
partially soluble. It's not very high, but they are soluble. Whereas magnesium hydroxide is considered as insoluble. 